Hello everyone. My name is Terry Gephardt. I'm the pastor at Iroquois Valley Christian Church and I'm down here to preach to you the gospel with the loving, prayerful support of my church family and the leadership there. I'd like to read to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. It says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept their testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if you speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Many of you I know are familiar with the words from John chapter 3 verse 16 that says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Many of you I know are probably familiar with John chapter 3, verse 17, that says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. But John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. My friends, I'm down here to tell you that the Bible does not say on Judgment Day God is going to stand as the judge and then decide over your life how much good you have and how much bad you have. And then if your good outweighs your bad, you get to come into heaven. That is not the type of judgment that is occurring here on Judgment Day. We are told that Judgment Day is much more like sentencing. Because John chapter 3 verse 18 tells us that if you believe in Him, you are not condemned. But if you do not believe in Him, you are condemned already. If you do not believe in Him, you are condemned already. Judgment Day is simply going to be this. God, looking upon your life and asking you one question, did you believe in my Son, Jesus Christ? Did you believe that He went to the cross and died for your sins? Did you believe that He died so you could have life. If your answer to that question is no, 
My friends, you're condemned already. God has already placed His judgment upon you. You're simply storing up wrath for the day of wrath. You have rejected your Creator and turned away from the only name under heaven which man can be saved. I plead with you, I beg you to look to the cross to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone to be saved. Your good works can't save you. Your church attendance can't save you. You can't simply just ask for forgiveness of your sins. That will not save you. Faith alone in Jesus Christ will save you. And I'm down here to tell you that it's as simple as that. If you would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and turn away from your sins and put your faith and trust in Him, you will get the gift of eternal life. God will give you a new heart and new desires and the things you once loved in this world you will hate and the things you once hated in this world that were of God you will love. It's as simple as that. It's a miracle. But those of us who have been called children of wrath, those of us who have been called sinful by nature, those of us who have been called slaves of our sin, a slaves of our own desires, can even be given the gift of faith, the gift of grace. That's the gospel. That is the gospel. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's called grace because we're undeserving. But may I remind you, there are no prideful people in heaven. The Bible says God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. So if you want to receive that gift of everlasting life, you must humble yourselves. And that means you look at the sin in your life and you say, Oh God, I am wretched. That means you look at the sin in your life and you say, Oh God, I need a Savior. And when you do that, God extends the loving grace to you through the death of His Son Jesus Christ on the cross who died on the cross a criminal's death who died on the cross the only innocent man who's ever been killed who died on the cross the sinless lamb taking upon himself the sin of the people he so loved so that if you would just turn from your sin, turn from this world, turn from this perverse generation and put your faith and trust in Him, He will save you. He has promised that all people who come to Him, He shall no wise cast out. My friends, I am pleading with you. This life is short. This life does not have much in it for us. For we were made for another life. I pray that if you heard these words that were spoken today, and by the power of the Holy Spirit you are coming alive to the grace of God, that you would put your faith and trust in Jesus. That you would turn away from your sin. For the Bible tells us, whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus Christ is the name of that one and only Son. And we are told if we just believe in Him, there will be no more condemnation. May you know and may you understand that you stand where you only have one choice. And that is bend your knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and be saved from your sin. 
or pridefully say, no, I choose my way. Pridefully say, no, I'm going to try to make my way there. I'm going to try to work my way there. No, I don't believe in God. He's ridiculous. No, I don't believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And be cast into hell for eternity. May you repent and turn away from your, son, from your sin and believe in the gospel this day. Because today is the day of salvation. I pray this. And I pray for all of you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved.